hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video as you could have seen from the title i'm going to be doing my 2021 in a wrap you guys ha ah. hmm. this year we thank god if you're new to my channel i usually do my lessons of the year at the end of the year throughout the course of the year i like to write down my personal learning experiences and at the end of the year i share some of them on my youtube channel and these videos do so well and i in fact this year for some reason i've gotten like four people message me randomly like to say please i'm waiting for your 2021 lessons of the year hope you're still going to film them because i had filmed a video recently on friendships if you haven't watched that video please go to watch it thank you also for all the comments shares and likes on that video if you haven't watched my previous lessons of the year you can even see in those videos my growth journey i think i started doing this video i think maybe six years ago i think so i'm going to try and put a playlist of all the lessons and i'm going to type title the playlist end of year lessons and then you can go back and binge watch them and i trust that they'll be a good watch because at the point in my life when i was filming those videos they were a blessing to me and to other people so yes without further ado let's get right into this video okay i have them on my phone here you definitely cannot see and i was just going through my lessons i think the day before and i was just thinking to myself i have almost 45 lessons that i've written down but i'm going to do my best and i'm going to only share i'll try and share as much as possible in the short time that we have hmm. so i'm going to start in no particular order because I ha i'm just going to start the way it's written in my notes so and by the way glory be to jesus the devil was a liar i almost lost all my lessons yesterday thank god for backup so let me just get right into the video the first lesson that i have here as i said is weights versus sin this lesson deserves a video on its own and i actually filmed that video but for some reason the lighting and sound was so bad and maybe i'll try and look for a way to edit it and maybe turn into like an audio maybe i'll put like a podcast or something it was just so bad but i'll see if i can edit it and also publish it as well but weights versus sin hmm. one thing i learned very you know strongly this year is that as believers we have to be careful you know not Quant not calling what awaits for us sin for other people and we also have to be careful as believers not to inculcate what is weights for another person and i'm going to put the spelling of weights on the screen like weights when something like a measure like when something is heavy and not and calling it as a sin or a lifestyle for us and i'm going to give a very good example so for instance, a weight is something that, you know, the Bible says that we should lay aside every weight. I'm going to put the scripture on the, on the screen as well. You should lay aside every weight, anything that, you know, limits you from growing in the things of God. Anything that might be maybe even a pseudo idol in your life. Anything that might be, let me even say, um, is like a thorn in your flesh. Let me say it's not causing, it's, it, it causes other people um, maybe to stray away from the things of God. So a weight can actually be material and immaterial. And I'll give you two examples. So weights versus sin. You know how the Bible says, you know, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Those are clear sins written by scriptures. Now a weight can be, let me say, you're so into like material things, right? And it's gotten to a point where, as I said in, I think, two video, three videos ago, I gave examples of how you begin to quantify your self-worth by the material things that you have. You think you're a valuable person. Maybe the, maybe you feel more you feel more valuable when you're wearing certain brands or you even actually address people with more, um, with more honor, <laughs> more respect just by, let me say, material things. That is a weight for, for you. And it's a weight because it's going to limit you from saying or being the best that God has called you to be. It's also going to also limit you from, you know, getting the value that you require from relationships. Now, if you are truly someone that is born again, you know, we're all growing. There's no perfection. You're growing. The perfection is in Christ. Do you understand? So we're growing day by day in the things of God. The more you spend time with God, God now begins to reveal to you that, you know what? Whatever your name is, I like to use the name Jennifer on my channel because I don't think I know any Jennifer in my personal life. You know, um, Jennifer, you know, maybe this desire for material things is becoming a weight to you. Perhaps, you know, 
don't buy anything for let me say two years or let me say you know your, your love for makeup is becoming an idol for you it's becoming a god for you the days you don't wear makeup you feel less of yourself you don't feel like you're beautiful you don't feel like you're worthy of even attention or you're worthy of love or kindness maybe don't wear makeup so that you can you can be trained to see yourself how god wants you to see to, to see yourself void of those things that might be a weight for you that you might not actually set aside now let me say you now have a platform let me say you are a, you just have a platform of any sort then you now go around telling people that buying designer bags is a sin or wearing makeup is a sin that's a problem something that is a weight for you might not be a weight for another person i as a believer I wear earrings, although I'm not wearing today. And in fact, lots of my videos, I don't even wear earrings. If you actually go and check my channel, not because it's a weight for me, it's a sin, or because it's just I just, with or without earrings, I am who I am in Christ. So those those things are just, they just add earthly value. It doesn't add anything to my spirit man as such. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let me say, for some reason, let's say earrings were a, were a, an idol for me or jewelry, and I come on my YouTube channel, I'll be like. I have a conviction in my heart that earrings are not good. That's a problem because that's not the truth of God's word. That might have been a conviction I received personally for my own work with God, which is to say you attach too much value on earrings, win yourself from earrings, and it might be food for you. And you know, because sometimes when people think of weights, people see it as I said, I said initially that it could be material or immaterial. It might be your social what they call it, your social worth, like your social net worth. It might be the kind of friends that you roll with. Maybe God is just telling you, you don't know, separate yourself from these people for a while. For a while. Or maybe God is telling, as I said, the example that I gave to us in no way earrings, and I'll come on my platform and I call this sin. Or you that you're watching, you'll be like, you know, ah, I like to sing, I watch her videos, and she doesn't really wear earrings as such. She only wears her natural hair. So you now stop relaxing your hair. You now go natural. You now stop wearing earrings. What you're doing is that you do not have a clear conviction. You're just doing, you're just following someone's personal work with God as your own yastic. And that in itself can be a sin because one, it can be idolatry. Two, it can be self-righteousness. So we have to also be very careful as we see one, one lesson is already taking how many minutes now, you know, weights versus sin. And I hope I've done, you know, a little bit of justice to this topic. And obviously over time we'll go another scriptural example before i go on is you know samson in the bible i think this was the example that the holy spirit gave me when i was you know brooding on this topic you know the way god told him like as a nazarene he should as a nazarite he shouldn't cut his hair his hair should have been and um, should be long his hair was a symbol of his strength that wasn't his strength as such but it was a symbol of his strength and then God did not tell every other israelite or every nazarene to keep their hair long it was only a commandment for samson via you know god telling his parents and they had kept that what would i say that practice all his life it would now be foolishness for everybody in the city because they saw how strong samson was to now grow their hair really long and say oh you know samson has supernatural strength he's a child of god he's a nazarite whatever all of us too are now going to grow dreadlocks or grow our hair really long not only are you going to look like just a follower you are not going to have the strength. In fact, if anything, you are going to be blinded to your own personal conviction because why you're following another person's conviction. So that's one of my lessons of this year that I would even say maybe in previous years, I might have known, but obviously this year, I was just seeing several scenarios. And I'm sure you guys saw like all these um, strange ministries that are coming up, this, especially this year. People coming up with strange prophecies that are not backed up by scripture. So you need to guard your heart, heart as a Christian, knowing what is a weight for you, what is sin according to scriptures. And you know, if God tells you to do something and you don't do it, maybe don't go to this place anymore and you keep going. The sin is not that you are going there. The sin is in the disobedience. So that's the first um, lesson. The second lesson is never measure the joys of your life with others. Hmm. It, will always lead to it will always lead to comparison and ingratitude. And this second point leads to my third lesson, and I'm going to say them together as one lesson, is that you may be in the greatest harvest of your life, but you, you only see lack. I'm going to say that again. You may be in the greatest harvest of your life, but you only see lack. And, you know, never measure the joys of your life with other people. So let me say, um, you just got married, you have a lovely child, you know, God has blessed you with your child, everything is going well. And then let me say 
someone younger than you or even maybe a bit older or whatever the age is even relevant you know also gets married and then they have twins right and then you have a joy in your life oh. god has blessed you tremendously you don't even know the spiritual warfare that maybe you have prayed or your loved ones have prayed for you for you to even be able to have that baby or even the generational curses you have broken for you to be married and have that baby but because your friend has twins you now begin to say ha ah, you know, if only I had twins, because of vain reasons, I wanted to go a second time. I wanted to do the, like you don't now. It now begins to cause you to be ungrateful for what you have. That like you actually need a probably a truckload of retrospection for you to actually say, ah, at least I don't even have children. I thank God for my portion. I know it sounds very, you know, the example might just be like, okay, that might be a bit extreme, but you'll be surprised what people compare their lives and other person's lives for. Another thing might even be, you know, material things. Not even children right now. Let me say, you know, God has helped you. You're able to pay your bills monthly. You are not in any, you have a debt-free life. Like you have zero debts to your name. Everything is, you know, financially God has helped you. But let me say you might not be a property owner yet. Or you don't have assets in your name. Or maybe say you haven't gotten into stocks and shares and all of those things. And then somebody else, let me say, buys a house. Or they tell you that they have so and so and so assets. Or they buy a landed property for real estate as part of their portfolio. And you suddenly start to compare the joys of your own life, which is absolutely worthy of celebrating to another person's own. Because why? You're using earthly, you know, value or human value just to measure them. You're being so ungrateful for your portion. So definitely, you might actually be in the season a great harvest if you look at your life so far from its um, inception is one of your best years you're not even sitting down to be grateful for your portion there's no how you will not always project a life of you know subtle depression it might not be you know depression like clinically depressed but you'll find yourself being sober when you survive people being happy you can't you're happy for them but you can't help but retrospect your own personal life but if you are full of joy thankful for the privileges that God has given you even if it's just the ability to eat three square meals a day me when I take food and I eat I'm so full of gratitude because I understand what poverty means I have probably never experienced poverty in my life but I don't need to experience poverty for me to know what God has done for me the capacity to be able to go into my fridge think of anything I want to eat and be able to make it is such a blessing so you can be in the greatest season of your life and because of your mindsets of comparison and you still say lack. So that's another lesson. Be careful of desperation because in desperation, there is no self-control. I liken lack of self-control to you know, when you drink so much alcohol to the point that you get drunk. You have no self-control in that moment. In fact, the Holy Spirit cannot minister to you in that, in that moment of drunkenness. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of believers or believers that really know what they are doing know that as a believer, you should not drink to the point of getting drunk. I personally abstain from alcohol generally. But you know, as I said, what is a weight for you may not be for a sin for another person. But myself, my father, my mother, my husband, we do not take alcohol um, general and i don't know why this alcohol topic came up because not even in my lessons but anyway i'm linking it to self-control when you are desperate desperate for money desperate for children desperate for husband desperate for promotion desperate to live in the country desperate to looking good desperate desperate to attract the attention of the opposite sex or whatever you want to attract there is no self-control <clears throat> Let's say you, and I'm going to use something very real, right? Let's say you, 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 you sleep every day normally by, let me say, 10 p.m., right? And suddenly you become so obsessed with, let me say you begin to have body dysmorphia. The, is it dysmorphia? I think that's what it's called. I think yeah, it's called, but the, you're not content with how you look. You're still, you feel your stomach is so big. Nobody else is saying it though, but only you, you are saying it. You feel your stomach is so big. You feel like probably your hip dips are too deep. You feel like your boobs are too small. You want them perky because let me say you've had babies. You feel like your nose is too big. You feel like your, your teeth is not white enough. Before you know it, you find yourself sleeping at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. You're online on plastic surgeon's pages. I'm being real here. You're online on plastic surgeon, surgery pages. You are comparing yourself to another person. You're going, you're just, there's no self-control anymore because desperation in desperation, there is no self-control. No matter how subtle, it begins to creep in. So, as I said, you know, also that's how people go into fraud. 
that's how people marry the wrong people because they are desperate i think i'm not in the middle let me move a bit yeah that's how people go into fraud because they are desperate to make money that's how people you know marry wrong people that god did not set for them because they are desperate to just leave that singlehood that's why people find themselves dating men they should never have even given an attention to if only they could have just waited a few months or a few weeks just to tarry in prayer just to see what god is saying about that relationship you know so so many examples i can give but please note that in desperation there is little to no self-control so please be careful of being desperate for anything based on the examples that i mentioned next, next point there is a god-sized hole in every human this is such a hard pill to swallow for so many people i I came to the understanding of this point, I would say last year, or I, I knew that, okay, uh, I mean, with my short time on earth, I have an understanding that everybody, every creature, God has made us with a desire for him. But I didn't just have the words for it. So the God size hole in every human, it means that that's why you see that even the greatest people, the most talented, the most musically talented, the most financially prudent, the most, as a people of notoriety, if there's a word like that, like people that are known for so many things, a lot of them still fall into, you know, hopelessness. They lack hope. There's no sense of purpose. They don't feel fulfilled. If you've had opportunity to maybe read books or even just, you know, just look around you, just look around you. You can even, just by the virtue of relationship, you might even know people that seem like they have it all together. But you see that Jesus joy, they don't have it. And so people that, it seems like they have everything, the kids, the cars, the clothes, the homes, the businesses, the beauty, everything, the eloquence. But there's just something missing. And that's the God factor in every human. The God factor in every human is what makes you realize that regardless, you are still valued. Regardless, you are loved. Regardless, God is good. Regardless, God is God. Regardless of challenges, God is God. Regardless of anything, God is meant to be worshipped. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is There's a god size hole in every human. And I want to appeal you as you're watching this video. If you feel like there might be, you feel some lethargy, you know, when it's time to worship. You feel some emptiness in your life, just generally. You lack a fire. You lack, a, you lack, you lack joy in your life. You lack peace. Is you need more of God. You might even think, oh, I'm a believer. How come I'm always feeling so anxious? Is there's a God-sized hole in your life that only the knowledge of God can fill up. And I pray for you today as you are watching this video that the light of God begins to illuminate your life. You begin to experience the joy of the Lord. You begin to experience peace. All the fruits of the Spirit begins to be your birthright if you are a believer. And if you are not a believer, I pray as you are watching this that God softens your heart. And you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And you receive the life of Christ. Amen. So, there's a God-sized hole in every human. Next point, ask for forgiveness at the thought of it, not at the utterance or at the deed. Ask for forgiveness at the thought of it, not at the utterance or at the deed. I'm going to give an example and I'm going to um, substantiate it. So the first one is, you know how the, um, you can say maybe, God forgive me, but this person is X, Y, Z. You've already said it now. <laughs> You really said it. You're saying, God forgive me, but this person is... You already know what you're doing is not good. So why are you doing it? God is calling us to a level where the Bible says that it's even the thoughts of your heart. Do you know if you think scripturally, thinking about something lustfully is enough to grieve the Holy Spirit. And when I say the word lustfully, I don't want you to see it as just sex. Lust is an unhealthy obsession or craving for something that is not yours or is not yet time an unhealthy craving <laughs> it's not yours or it's not yet time so at the thought of that lust of a desire to you know maybe as i give the examples i gave you're lusting over material things you're lusting over somebody else's wife you're lusting over somebody else's relationship you want it. You're obsessed with them. You idolize. You don't even know them. You understand what I'm saying? Like an unhealthy loss. It is at that moment when you think about it. That's when you should ask for forgiveness. And I, I learned that this year because I think I was studying that scripture of, you know, 
if a man should just think about a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery even bef be before sleeping with her. And that thought, he really, he, I've read that scripture so many times. But this year, it ministered to me so, and that's the beautiful thing about being in Christ. Day by day, you are unlearning, un unraveling, because God is so deep, he's so wide, the depths of God cannot be, cannot be comprehended. So obviously, the knowledge of God can never be comprehended. There's no limits, there's no maximum level. Day by day, the Bible says we grow in glory, we grow in grace, we grow in light. The path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day when we see Jesus. And when I, when I understood that scripture, I was like, ah. So even when I think of, let me say something that maybe you are human. Maybe you just think something, maybe your husband annoys you and you just think an ill thoughts towards him. And I don't want anyone to think anything extreme. Don't know. We are not depraved people. So we don't think, just maybe just see, see his head. <laughs> or just you want to say you are so silly or you want to say something, you know, something negative that you know that if the Holy Ghost was in flesh beside you, you would not say you ask for forgiveness. And I'm taking that song, but the moment I even want to, maybe somebody asks for my opinion or something, and I know it's none of my business, I'll just say, God, I ask for mercy. You can never ask for forgiveness too much. God, please forgive me if there be any thoughts of my heart. And I love King David. There's a scripture that says, um, you know, search my heart if there be any iniquity in my heart. Because King David understood that the human mind, which is one of my lessons, is too limited to be your own yardstick for what righteousness is. The human, your mind is too limited. So even when you think that you're pious, you're righteous, you're doing everything according to your own understanding, you need to understand that his mercies are new every morning for a reason. You need to understand that there just might be something that maybe there's, you might even need restitution for, maybe something you did years ago, that obviously as you grow in grace, God empowers you with the capacity to offer restitution or maybe it might even be something that you are even still going to do you know and you you already started um gathering the momentum for it you know so always you also always have to have a heart of you know god perhaps if there be anything that i have done that i have said if there be anybody that i have wronged unconsciously if there be any ill thoughts that i have thought towards anybody jesus have mercy on me so that point you know ask for forgiveness at the thoughts of it not at the utterance. And if you live your life like that, I guarantee you that you'll find yourself more giving thanksgiving to God for helping you, you to work righteously than always having to go on your knees to ask for forgiveness. Do you get? Because you are feeding your spiritual life into piety, not into, you know, always, you know, this grace ministry. But that's topic for another day. We are all walking in grace to God with the glory. The next one. Pursuing godliness or the power. Uh, you guys, may God help us in this our journey of faith. Oh, huh. You know, this lesson, I don't know what I was reading. And that was what I actually said was like, is this person pursuing godliness or pursuing like spiritual, like the power that comes with knowing God? This thing actually brought to mind, I think, the story of the man in the Bible called Simon. He was a sorcerer. I think, he saw, I think in the book of Acts, I think he saw um, Peter when they were doing, you know, miracles. God empowered them, you know, through when they received the Holy Ghost. And I think he wanted the anointing. He wanted that. And he had said to them that, oh, please, that can he pay? Can he pay for some money? And then he will also be able to do the same thing. Obviously, his intentions were not pure. He wanted to do it for, like, theat theatrics. He wanted to do it for like power, just to be able to do things, just to be able to, you know, have a word of knowledge. And I think in the Bible, yeah, Peter said to him, is an act that may your money perish with you. In the later verses, he said, may your money perish with you. So as a believer, when you say you're pursuing godliness, you know, you know, the Bible says godliness, godliness with contentment is great gain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when you're pursuing godliness, you have to, which too, it just goes back to my second um, point you have to check the roots of why you're pursuing it are you reading scriptures so that you'll be able to quote them off the top of your head to show off to people that you are spiritually sound i remember that i think it was apostle Paul that was saying that it's not by the eloquence of speech that we have been saved that is a mark that we have been saved are you you know praying going for night video attending trainings so that you can prophesy to people so that you can just see people and have a word of knowledge for them you want to be called a prophet you want to be called a prophetess you want people to see you and be like ah i'm seeing no like <laughs> pardon me being nigerian <laughs> like you know 
like ah and see um oh, but no go but then top a real vibe like if i'm gonna translate what i'm saying like if they see you like this word of knowledge just ensues are you that is that why you are doing those things see we 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 worship god because we are made to worship god in fact that's the meaning of my name Oluwatu Sen. god is worthy of our worship we are made to worship him we are giving glory to god because that's the that's the purpose of our creation in every expression of our life you don't chase god for the byproducts of knowing god no that's why when you when you when you want to evangelize to somebody you don't go there and say oh don't steal again don't kill again don't you don't do that mm -mm, that's not the that's not what jesus has taught us you share the good news the, that's what we, the Bible says, go into the world and share the gospel. You share the message of Christ. I'm praying that as you have preached, you have sown that seed. Apollo will water, but God will give that increase. Just know what I'm saying. That's why we say, and you pray that hopefully the Holy Spirit now inspires them. As they grow in the knowledge of God, they know that, okay, I don't lie anymore. I don't wear certain clothes anymore. I don't speak in a certain way anywhere. The thoughts of my heart are being transformed by the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? It's not that when you now become born again, you are becoming born again so that you can start speaking in tongues to show off. And a lot of people mistake the gift of speaking in tongues as they see it as um, something that is for other people. No, the Bible says that he that speaks in tongues edifies himself. You are speaking in tongues for yourself. You are not speaking in tongues for somebody. You are speaking in tongues to edit, to grow your spirit, man. To speak the mysteries of the spirit that the human language cannot trans can cannot transcend. Let me use that word. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, it's not for other people. So, when you give your life to Christ, when you go for anointing services, when you go for impart impartation services, like when maybe is even scripture when somebody by the laying of hands, you know, don't go with the mindset of you are chasing the power. Chase godliness. The Bible says, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That scripture is so perfect for this point. And all other things shall be added unto you. So seek to glorify God in every expression of your life and begin to watch how you, the gifts that God has given. Some people have the gift of teaching. Some people have the gift of healing the sick. Some people have a host of gifts. Some people have gifts per season of their life. The gift of God is without repentance. But there's some things that some people are able to do that maybe they are, the, the manifestation, they're not able to do it another time. You know, just by the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, God can use and do anybody as he wishes. When people make accusatory statements, always ask them to substantiate it. <laughs> no, I'm getting to more human personal relationships. And when I say accusatory statements, I always don't want people to always think, you know, so maybe somebody accused you of stealing or accused you of stealing their husband or their wife. Not, not those type of accusa accusations. I mean, maybe things like, um, um, maybe someone says, oh, when I call you, you never pick. You say, oh, really? And when you know it's not true, you say, oh, okay, okay, really? Please, can you give me some instances when I called you and I did not pick? I called you yesterday. Is yesterday always? Is yesterday you never pick? You called me yesterday. I didn't pick. Perhaps I was busy. Why are you saying that you call me all the time and I never pick? So sometimes people say things. They just say so casually. That's why as believers we have to be careful. Every word we utter from our mouth. You're going to give account of it. Don't just open your mouth bah, and just accuse somebody. Or just say, oh, the guy lies a lot. The guy doesn't lie a lot. Perhaps he said something inaccurate one time. Doesn't mean he lies a lot. You are now the liar. Which is going to lead to my another point. You are now the liar. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have to be careful. Like when people or you now retrospect. Let me say you don't do what I'm saying. Let me say you're on the receiving end. When people say things to you, all these accents are substantiating. Oh, that my friend, I found out that um she's always maybe someone is relaying an information to you. Or that my colleague at work, she he did this one, did this. One. Oh, okay. Ah, can you substantiate? Can you tell me? Can you say why you have come to this conclusion? Um, okay, you say the person is always coming late. Okay, how did you come to that conclusion that they're coming, always coming late? What's the resumption time? What's on their contract? Just, you know, always ask people to... Doesn't mean that they are wrong, but always ask people to substantiate it. That's why even in the court of law, you can't just come and just say somebody... Some, there's, there's a word they use in law, without a reasonable doubt. Evidences must align that this person is found guilty or this person is going to be exonerated. 
So when people say things accusatory to you, ask them to substantiate it. And when they come with facts, if you are at fault, be humble enough to apologize. So next point. When you point a finger, four is pointing back to you. You know, I've known this statement, like, I think so, I don't know who the person is personally, but someone used to say that, I've heard this, this quote from someone before. But this year, who was, somebody was complaining about somebody to me. And everything they were complaining about, they were equally guilty of those things. So let me give you an example. Let me just say something funny. You smell, you have body odor, you could do better with your personal hygiene. And then you're coming to come and tell somebody that, ah, oh my God, that guy's mouth stinks. <laughs> the moment you open your mouth to say something about somebody that is not adulatory, that is negative, automatically you have placed yourself in a position to be exam examined. Automatic. This is just principle of nature. The moment you open your mouth to say, ah, this person, oh, her husband is such a cheat. The best of all, imagine your own husband. Eh, okay, interesting. Luckily, maybe your own husband is not a cheat, you know. But if he was... You, you look so silly, like you haven't even removed the speck in your eye, the log in your eye, you want to remove the speck in another person's eye. So, always be careful, you know, and I saw a quote earlier this year that said, um, the goal, which you can add it to my lessons, and it really stood out to me, one of my church members actually put it on her Facebook, my ex-church member, she's moved to another city now, and she said, the goal is to give constructive critique, not to be a critical person, you know, just try. The goal is to be a, don't say, oh, I'm blunt, skinny cockle. The goal is to give constructive feedback, not to be a critical person. Nobody wants to be known as someone that all you see is flaws. No, as you are giving one flaw, and, and I'm going to give an, a good example. As you are giving one flaw, make sure you have given other areas where the person could actually improve of it. Or you've actually complimented, because nobody is all bad, except the, someone that is a psychopath. Nobody is all bad. So let me give you an example. Someone was commenting on someone's Instagram that ah, this um, outfit that you wore is so not nice like I think I don't know I can't remember the, the outfit but I remember that the comment was this outfit that you're wearing is not nice and I said to myself that this lady has almost a hundred other pictures that look beautiful you have never gone there to comment that you look so stunning but the day she doesn't look nice you're the first to say this hair does not suit you don't do this hair again. You are a critical person. And that, that character is not good. You should always look for the best in people. As you're looking for the best in people, perhaps you see areas of growth. If it's in your place to give that correction, then you can correct. If an influencer maybe always dresses very decently, very nice, you've never DM'd them. Oh, your outfit is so beautiful. The day they wear something that you don't like, you now comment, don't you think this cat is too short as a believer? Something is wrong with you, sis. Something is wrong with you. Someone has been writing posts for you on Instagram. And I'm some, one, some, a lady that I follow on Instagram, I won't say her name. She, she called out someone that did this to her. She's always posting no issues. You never compliment her. The first DM from her, from somebody to her was, she made a typo. All the days she has been writing correctly, you never thought to say, you write so well. But the day she made a typo, or she used the grammatical error, or what you perceived to be a grammatical error, you were the first person to DM. There's something wrong with you. Your perspective towards life is a flawed one. You need to always see the best in people and communicate the best in people. Don't waste till when they do, they do less of their best, then you're not the first person to be blunt. Why were you not blunt when they looked nice? Next lesson. A skill not honed is mediocre. Or, I also wrote, a skill not honed will always be mediocre. So let me say you're good at sewing, or not good, you know how to sew. And I'm going to use myself. I learned how to use the machine. I can't say I learned how to sew. I learned how to use the machine at a workshop. And I would say, because I spent a lot of time with my tailor when I was in Nigeria, I can slim fit my clothes, I can adjust very well, I can fix a dart. But guess what? That skill will always be mediocre, because I've not honed it. I'm not practicing every other night. I'm not, imp I'm not, I mean, I have no desire to. So it will always be mediocre. So if you have something that, maybe say a skill that God has placed in your life that is supposed to increase you. Let me say your handwriting is really good and everybody's always complimenting you. Perhaps try calli calligraphy classes and, you know, your writing is really good. And you find that 
even when you go through like you know this cursive like calligraphy pages you it really interests you you find yourself you know really you, it, there's a spark in you when you see those things guess what if you don't go for calligraphy classes even if you are naturally adept or akin to a nice calligraphy handwriting you will never be the best you will never even be you will never be a par with those in that industry because that skill has not been honed so whatever it is it's just an inquiry even for myself whatever you keep doing and you're good at you're improving of it of it that's what allowed you to be a master that's what allowed you to reach master class level but if you keep just you have 100 skills none of them have been honed to master level you will always be mediocre do you understand what I'm saying? So a skill not honed will always be mediocre. When there's no unity, the spirit of strife, nitpicking, listening for errors and offense will always be in your hearts. So that's just what I said. Like, and I, I gave an example and I don't know if I should, okay, let me just share it. You know, um, let me say you are in a youth group and all of you are like in a WhatsApp group and all of you are chatting in that youth group. And because you don't, you're not in one heart. You're about to say, "Oh, near um, Okokong, below everybody." You're not there with um, with oneness of heart. You always be there, like ready for errors. You are once they they make a mistake or they don't do something up to your standard, you be the first person to write a pistol of how you know they should do better because there's no oneness of unity, which still leads to my previous point about don't be a, a critical person. Be a person that gives constructive feedback. Um, mental health for men and I wrote that because this year it, it really um, dawned on me that a lot of men I don't know they need a lot of support and I know that they might not be the most vulnerable but please if you have men in your life your fathers your husbands your siblings even you you as a man watching this let me say God has given you sound mind try to be empathetic towards other men try to make excuses for their errors try to see how you can support them Try to stand in a gap for them prayerfully so that they can improve. So please take mental health for men very seriously. A failed government, <laughs> a failed government makes its citizens celebrate mediocrity. And that's the truth. Like I can imagine, I have a business in Nigeria. I lived in Nigeria literally the later years of the, 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 the bulk part of my life, not the later years, the bulk part of my life I lived in Nigeria. And I can imagine if I go to Nigeria, for example, let's say I went to Nigeria and Suddenly, they announced that it's 24 hours um, electricity and it actually is consistent for, let me say, a whole year. I probably would also be part of people and be like, oh my God, I'm so grateful to God that Nigeria, you know, I'm celebrating mediocrity because my government is a failed government. They failed in the past years. They have failed. You understand? So, yeah, a failed government allows its citizens to or encourages its citizens to celebrate mediocrity. Little commitments over grandiose verbose promises. Even though I'm like English, I used to write stuff. <laughs> Little commitments. So let's say you say, ah, oh, next year I'm currently weighing 70 kg. Next year I want to weigh 50 kg. I'm just putting those figures out there. Such a grandiose commitment, you know. But what about or, the, or that's such a grandiose statement? What about little commitments? You know, I'm going to start that. I'm going to ensure that I drink more water daily. I'm going to try and exercise, you know, once every week. Let me get into the reading. You find out that you get more results. Little commitments over grandiose promises. Ah, the next one. To the pure, all things are pure. There's a scripture like that. And But scheming people always think everybody's scheming. <laughs> Someone that, let me say... um. It's a spiteful person. They always think everybody else is spiteful. And this word is a word called projecting. And I'm going to substantiate it. I've actually done a little bit. I've gone in depth on this topic on my Insta stories. If I can find the link, I'll put it in the description box. If I can't, I apologize in advance. Like projecting. If you haven't heard the word before, projecting is simply is an outward expression of something in your personal life. But you, you, you put that burden on other people and I'll substantiate it. I'm going to use something that I know that, you know, is always the matter in our outdoor. You have a cheating spouse or a cheating boyfriend, right? Let me say you don't trust your boyfriend. And someone is telling you that, oh, that, um, oh this person's husband is so lovely. He's so kind. He's... And you'll be like, oh, can I trust me? No, are you sure he's not cheating? You're projecting. 
you're projecting your own insecurities. That's what you're projecting. You're projecting your own insecurities on the person. What about saying, oh, that's so lovely and keep it there. Why do you need to connect someone's good with your own insecurity? Do you understand what I'm saying? Or another way of projecting, which I've given in one of my videos, in case you missed that video, is let me say you're coming from a place of lack and the moment you begin to have people that are coming from a place of lack, you don't want to associate with them. You're projecting the trauma from lack on, another, on other people that have not done anything to you. That's another way of projecting. Another way of projecting is like, let me say, you know, let me use something like a lot of moms, you know, as a mom. Now, let me say, you know, snapping back, you know, after giving birth. And you see someone, let me say, walking towards you and they look fit. And I'll be like, sure, don't die. Breathe out. Ah, ah. <laughs> I'm sure ah, these examples I'm already giving you yourself, you're beginning to see imaginations. Like, that's just what projecting is. So, scheming people always think people are scheming. Spiteful people always think people are spiteful. When you say something nice to somebody, someone that is cynical will never hear the good. They will only see the bad. When you tell somebody, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And, you know, God will order your steps. They'll tell you, oh, it's easy to say. It's easier said than done. It's because of their own personal weaknesses. They have not been able to have faith in God. So they are projecting it on the statements that you have made, which is a fact. But they have chosen not to see it as a fact in their own personal life. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's another lesson. I shared this in my previous video before, but I'll still say it again. When you first hear the word, examine it for yourself. The word is a mirror for yourself. First, you remove the log in your eye. First, perhaps you'll be able to see clearly so that you can remove the log in other people's eyes. So that's that. When sharing opinions publicly, or when sharing opinions, especially publicly, be careful not to magnify the issue. If you are unable to build up and give counsel or give solutions, best to stay mute. This year, I started following some mommy pages just, you know, just to learn because as I said, we're all learning every day. And I follow one particularly. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I, I always post this page. I like the, the content that the, the, the person shares. So I follow this mommy page and I know that one of the things that she posts is people's personal dilemmas. So maybe they'll come up and say, oh, um, I found out that maybe say... The person is HIV positive. I don't know how to tell my husband. Please help me. I've, I've not been cheating. I probably cut it through work because I'm a medical, whatever. You know, if you know that you cannot go and leave a succinct advice, even if it's just a word of prayer that I don't have a solution to your answer, but I pray that God gives you the grace and strengthen you through this period of decision making. That's better. Now I'm going there to comment. You are a horrible person or Wala for who not get a child. You know, all this stupid, non constructive comments. Or someone is complaining to you that their husband is abusive, and you leave a comment saying, um, maybe the man is a very stupid man. The man is so abusive. You're stating the statement of fact. Door is abusive. Perhaps leave, don't leave comments that magnifies the issues. Satan is very terrible. One small thing like this. It might not even be small. It might even be something of, you know, like I said, an, an abusive spouse. The person right now does not need you to reinforce and let them know that, oh, they might have gonorrhea. They might have this thing. Their self-esteem. They're not able to fulfill purpose. What they need is an escape route. You can tell them, I suggest you reach out to this organization. They would help you depending on the time you're able to come up with a decision that is void of emotions. Do you have a source of income? If not, perhaps let us start a, a GoFundMe group to give you some money to move to a safe place so that you don't die in where you're being physically abused. You know, things like that. So please, if you're watching me and you are my tribe and you are God's army, please, before you leave any comments, ask yourself, am I giving a comment based on my own personal experiences? Am I giving a comment based on just maybe I'm just being one-sided? Do I have the true picture of the whole story? Am I just being critical? Am I giving constructive feedback? If I don't leave a comment, will anything happen to me? If I leave a comment, is it worthy as in, is it, is it a worthwhile comment that the commenter will leave, read and leave energized? As believers, we leave people better than we met them. We don't leave people feeling worse off. Even when giving a stern feedback, Maybe somebody's telling you that I can't help it. I'm only just borrowing from loan apps. The person needs a one-on-one -on -one talk. Just and perhaps live within, within your means. But there's a way you can actually give the truth in love, in honesty. That, that even if the person, they don't feel defeated. Just the same way when we are asking God for forgiveness. 
God does not condemn us. The Holy Spirit convicts. He does not condemn us. So be careful when you're giving feedback not to outrightly condemn people. That's actually what judging is. But people are not ready for that conversation. So that's that. And Every then, vice. Maybe this one should have been in number one. Hmm. Every vice has a community waiting with open hands to accept you. Be careful of public adulation. Let me use something that scripturally, morally, everywhere we know is wrong. Pedophilia. Hmm. Pedophilia is a spirit, is a demon, is a everything. Just horrible. But it's something that all, I, don't let me even say all religion because I can't really say. An inordinate affection for underage people. You'll be surprised that there's a community waiting to accept them. In fact, I read something that broke my heart that they are fighting for human rights. They want to add them to the LGBTQ so that they, too, they believe in sexual orientation. As long as they don't act upon it, they are allowed to have those fantasies. They are allowed to have child pornography on them. God have mercy. Anyway, you know, but every vice has a community. So be careful of doing something scripturally wrong. And people are telling you, I support you as long as you are happy. Be very careful. You can be a believer and suddenly you have an inordinate affection for, let me say, um, going to ungodly places. Consistently going to places where satanic things are being done there. Like clubs. Like clubs where even the atmosphere is set for seduction. Places where you sh a child of God should not be found there. You will see that if you begin to post those things, you will find other people that will be saying, right on sis, I knew like, you know, I love a believer that knows how to have fun. Why does your own fun have to be foul? Why does he have to? Anyway, every vice has a community, is, is waiting. So don't think that something is acceptable because it's legal. Because the way we are going, people will be allowed to sleep with animals. Don't think because it's accepted by a country or a certain amount of people, a nation, a small nation, a combination of people, it's okay. It's a vice and God needs to deliver. You need deliverance from it. Just the same way in my own personal life too. I'm sure that's something that I used to do to that God has delivered me from. So please, it's a vice that you need deliverance from. Is Feedback is, is essential. Learn to give feedback. If someone gives you great service, give them feedback. If someone gives you service that could be improved upon, give them feedback. I did not say go on their page and insult them. I did not say go on your Instagram and give them feedback. Give them feedback that they can see. You don't need to tag them. Send them a message. Send them an email. Give feedback. Not just for companies, for your friendships. Someone tells you, one of my very um, good friends, she ordered some shoes from her, for her husband and she said the leather was so bad. The day they delivered, the shoe was already opening. And she was like, she just, she will never order from there again. I said, ah, as a business owner, I would really love if somebody can give me that kind of feedback. Or at least give the, the staff that I put in charge that feedback. You mail them. Thanks so much for the prompts delivery. But when I opened the shoe, it was already opening. You'll be surprised that it might not even be the business owner. It might be maybe say, just what they call that thing, the, 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 the supply chain. Do you get that might have caused the problem? So not even just for um, businesses relationships always give feedback feedback is crucial any revelation not founded in the word of god would always lead to manipulation in these last days there's so many lying spirits this year i came across so many people of influence that they were just sharing things that as soon as i saw it the holy spirit inside of me let me know that that's a lie from the pit of hell it is not when expressions, opinions are not founded in the word of God. It is always a way to manipulate and blind you and rob you of the truth of God's word. So as a believer, you have to be careful. Anybody coming to tell you, coming to give you, oh, this is your child. The way, the reason why they are behaving this way is because when you were younger, you insulted somebody. Be careful. It is not founded on the word of God. All these heresies, they are deceptive spirits. They are prophets of doom. That's what they are. Be very careful. So any revelation that is not, is not giving you a solution, is not giving you the way out, is not tell, be careful of it. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Okay, let me just quickly say this one. It says, we are the living stones that builds up the church. Please, this year, I know I think I said it in one of my videos, which was, um, I think, um, is he, is he, I think it's one of my videos I said something about, as a believer, the moment you don't see yourself, as part of the church, 
you always see yourself as someone from outside in, like a judge over somebody. If your child does something wrong, they see them as a part of you. You're trying to help them to be better. If you're not a corrupt parent, help them to be better, improve them, make them better. Look for things, ways you reach that you know that, okay, maybe this is my child. She, her reading is not so good. Let me buy more books. Let me ensure that what she's watching and things are educating. You don't now take that child into the market square and say everybody on Instagram or my child or has a reading difficulty or no, you don't do that because why? It's your flesh. People will be like, what kind of parents are you? So also, as a believer, we are the living stones that builds up the church. May the Lord expand and expound that word for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Correct first from understanding because zeal without seeking understanding and knowledge will ultimately lead to self-righteousness. So this year, um, two gospel musicians in Nigeria, well, I call them gospel musicians, gospel ministers in Nigeria, I think um, one of them had said something about another person's song and it caused a really huge, out, um, what's the word? Opera, yeah. It was about a song. And I'm going to say the name of the song. Then you can go, oh, should I even say? Let me say. Is this song? It says, Oniduro Mi Eshe, like, you know, my advocate, like the person that stands for you, my guarantor. Thank you. And another lady had, you know, spoken about this. So I'm not, I don't even know the context of the exact things that she said, but I knew that there was an opera for it. And people were going at the lady. And one of, one, a lady, one, somebody I found on Instagram, she really went at her. This, uh, and I said, if I ask this girl now, if she can show me in scriptures where Oniduromi is, Como. She does not know. She does not know. But she knows that the song is not wrong. But she cannot substantiate why it's not wrong. So what she's saying is self-righteousness. Because zeal without understanding is self-righteousness. You have the zeal to correct somebody, but you don't even know why they are wrong. But the scriptures have told us that God, our great advocate. Do you understand? There's a scripture for it. It's like another song that I saw on YouTube. It says, um, um, it's foolishness I know. I'll put the song. It said God's foolishness is wiser than the wisest. And I know that in the comments, somebody had commented that, how can you say God is foolishness? That, and there's actually a scripture that says that even the foolishness of God, like the wisdom, is, is wisdom raised to power infinity to the wisdom of man. Do you get So sometimes before you go and be... You know, so zealous for God. Seek knowledge and understanding. So that when you're correcting, you're correcting from a place of understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody is doing something or something happens. Because not everything is straightforward. It's a, a matter that is not really clear. But you know in your heart that is wrong. Perhaps just by, you know, morality. But the Bible says, hmm, thank you God. It says, <laughs> having a form of godliness. You have a form of godliness but you're denying its power like you know but this thing is not good but you don't really know why you don't really know why because why you have not studied scriptures you're bothered about removing the log in that person's eye perhaps there's a log in your own eye you know or the speck so may the lord help us you know even with our zeal let it be channeled to growing ourselves spiritually and not just you know self-righteousness okay this is worthy of being the last one it says Eternity is eternity. It's never ending. But life is too short not to live your life authentically in Christ. Eternity is never ending. It's forever. But you see this life that we're in is too short not to live authentically in Christ. It's too short. See that dash between the day you were born and the day the Lord calls you home, if the Lord tarries. It's too short for you not to live a life passionate about the things of God. It's too short. So yeah, that's about it for my 2021 lessons. Oh my gosh, I think I've been talking for almost an hour. My mouth might have been paining me by now. But yeah. Wow, guys. Wow, we're at the end of this video. When I started this video, it wasn't this dark outside. I just looked outside now and it's literally like so gloomy. But yes, these are my lessons for 2021. And I really hope that as I was sharing this video, you know, God helps you to just also even my own lessons too. I pray that they are a blessing to you. And whatever lessons that you have learned in your own personal life, I want to encourage you to write them down because I want my child to grow up and be able to look back at these videos and they will be instrumental for her 
when she's you know navigating her own journey with god as well so yeah um thank you guys so much for watching this video um this year i'm just going to talk about a few things um the highlights of this year was just many i just want to give god all the glory for this year a lot of um things happened my brother graduated from uni you know my daughter turned a year old my uk business was launched officially you know so many things and i just want to give glory to god i entered a competition that i would know the results in about a month you know so many things happened and i just want to give god all the glory next year i was saying on my instagram story i'm looking forward to more work i want to work really really harder and smarter next year and i feel like you know i've been in postpartum phase for almost two years now since before the pandemic now the pandemic is still there but not really here but now it's time to dust my heel and get running so you guys should please expect more work more collaborations and i want to give glory to god almighty for the opportunities that god brought my way this year by virtue of work by virtue of um, businesses, like my business was able to reach almost 12 countries in shipping this year. I want to give God all the glory. Not just that, not the business, I'm even having goosebumps. I want to cry. Not only that, um, the brands that God brought my way, I was just on my own and they came to work with me. You guys, I am a Christian born again YouTuber. And some of the opportunities that I get, I still have to pinch myself and say, truly, truly 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 god is faithful like i know god is faithful but i have seen and i can know that serving god pays serving god really pays and i'm able to work with so many and next year i pray that the expenses are even raised to power infinity and also the capacity to give back as well i want god to keep you know empowering me with the opportunity to give back so those are really my goals for next year next year is going to be a prayed up year I want to pray. This year, I said last year that I want to really spend time interceding for people. And I thank God that I was able to achieve that. This year, I joined a prayer call with, I think, four of my friends. And we're praying for people every day. Like, I just want to thank God for that. God was able to allow me to do that. And also, what else again? Just next year, you guys, support me. When you watch my videos, leave a comment. Communicate your thoughts. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Share with your friends. You know, engage with my sponsored posts. Anything. My business. Buy from Nigeria Naturals UK. Shop from us. Shop from our business. Shop, shop, shop. I'll put all the links in the description box. Shop from us. Make me happy. You know, this money that we are making, it's not for me. Oh. Hmm. It's to solve problems. But we thank God. And yeah, I love you guys so much. And I wish you a fantastic year end. I don't even know when I'm going to upload this video. I wish you a great year end. And I pray that next year blows your mind. I love you guys. And thank you for supporting me. Until next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.